Hey guys, welcome to another coding tutorial video. In this video, I'm more talking about databases and we're not going to be really doing much coding, but I wanted to cover the idea of triggers in MongoDB databases because it's a super useful way to keep track of the data passing in and out of your collections without having to be constantly monitoring it. Um, and then to do this, we've set it up using Atlas. Uh, Atlas is a free website that you can use. You can log in, create an account and get your first database set up without having to pay anything. If you don't know how to do this already, I've got another video showing the basics of setting up with Atlas. So make sure you go check that out. So that way you can get your first collection up and running. Um, and now you may be wondering like, why would I want to use a trigger? Like what's it good for? So a trigger would basically mean every time a certain condition is met, which you're going to be able to specify, you want some sort of code to execute. So that could be useful. Let's say you have a collection of users for your application and each time a new user signs up and puts themselves into the collection, you want to be notified in some way. So that would be a good use case for a trigger because you're getting told every time something happens to that collection that you're specifying. Um, so yeah, let's get right into it. I'll show you how to set up the basics of it on Atlas here. So on the left, you're gonna to wanna to go to triggers and then we're gonna add trigger. So let's set the name to test trigger. Now it's important to note here, we have trigger types. So there are two types of triggers. One is a database trigger and the other one is a scheduled trigger. The database trigger basically means anytime something that you want to happen happens to your collection, it's gonna set off this trigger. For example, um, the user document was inserted into your collection or someone deleted something from a collection that you're looking at, every time something specific happens that you want to be notified about, you can set up a database trigger for it. So we've linked our only cluster to it right here. Um, and then it, the triggers are super versatile. You can you know pick any database that you have access to and then you can specify whichever collection. So I'm gonna pick this demo collection that I've got right here. And then now what I was talking about are the specific conditions that you wanna meet is right here the operation type. You can either do insert, update, delete, and replace. So anytime one of these is checked, the database is gonna be constantly looking for one of these actions to happen. And as soon as it does, it's gonna set off this trigger. So I'm gonna set this one up with just the insert one, but you can also mess around with these other three. So now what we've said here with these specifications is anytime the collection demo inside the database houser has a document inserted, we're gonna call this trigger. Um, I'm gonna set the full document. That just basically means I'll be able to see everything. Uh, it'll, it'll like return the whole document to me. Um, and then over here, there are two options you can set up for your triggers. One of them is a function that you're able to work with right here. And then the other one is an event bridge. And an event bridge is something to do with Amazon and I'll have a different video going into that, but that's something else entirely. We're just gonna set up the function inside Atlas right here for now. So all our conditions are set up um, and then now let's get the actual function to do something. Because this is just a demonstration, I just wanna show you that it's working. New document inserted. And we'll save it. So what I'm saying is every time I have this trigger go off, I want a log to run and I want the function to trigger and we're just gonna to be told that a new document got inserted. So we have it set up here, right here. And I'll go to my other tab. My other tab is also Atlas, but now I'm on the database page. So if you remember, I set it up with the Hauser database and I'm on the demo collection. So let's give it a try here. I'm going to insert a document. Um, let's just do, let's. Let's go with the idea that it's for a user. So let's go name, Matt, and then we'll give it an email. So right here, I'm about to insert this document and it should set off that trigger that we just set up. So I just inserted it. And now we have one document in this collection. So if I go to my triggers, we can see the execution logs. And now we've just got a test trigger 
at this timestamp, which is the current time right now because I've just inserted. And if we open it up, right here we have the log new document inserted. So that's how you can sort of set up the trigger to be anytime something specific happened to a collection, you will have the trigger off. And you can do way more with that code down there. This is just a basic demonstration, but you know, you can set up email reminders with that. You can set up exports. You know, there's a ton of things that you can do, but this is just to show you how the trigger works and how to get it running based off of a collection. And now let's say you wanted the information of what was inserted so that you could do something with it. So you can access that using this variable change event that's passed into your function. So for example, if I log here, we were doing a user. So let's say we want to get their name. Users name was, and then you're going to access the change event object, change event. And then you remember I clicked full document here. So we need to make sure we grab full document. And then the field would have been name like that. Um, and then say we, we also wanted, we did emails as well. So email, and then I'll also specify the email. So now this is just to show you again, it's just a console log. I'm not going to be doing anything with it, but it's just to show you that you can access the information that came from the trigger onto the page of my collection. And I'm going to insert another person. So we're doing a second person now and we'll give them some basics as well. So we've set them up with the name and the email again, and they've just been inserted. So I'll go back to my updated trigger and let's go to logs. So this most recent trigger, we have user's name was Alex and user's email was test2 at gmail.com, which is what we inserted. So as you can see with the trigger, you get past a variable that allows you to do anything you want with what was happening. You can document this or, you know, sort of display it in any way you need to. So now we're back at the triggers page. And if you remembered when I went to add trigger, there was another type as well. We can also do schedule triggers. So this will not be looking for anything specific uh, the way the database trigger was. It's not gonna trigger off of just an insert or just a delete. This one is more so as the name implies, it's gonna be running periodically off of the condition that you set. So no matter what, if anything gets inserted or deleted, it's going to run on a continuous period that you can set. And this may be useful because let's say, you know, every day at midnight, you want to run a scheduled trigger that gives you information about the database. Um, maybe once a month, you're going to want to run some statistics on your database, stuff like that. So this is how we're going to set up a continuous repeating trigger. So we'll name this one. We'll just name it scheduled trigger. Um, and then we'll keep the basic options. The advanced options go into cron settings, um, but I don't think it's necessary for the demonstration. The basics keep it super beginner friendly. So let's say we'll have this repeat every minute. We'll do every five minutes. So I'm basically saying I want this trigger to go every five minutes and it's gonna be collect connected to our Hauser cluster. And if you'll notice, we don't actually set the specific collection um, the way we were doing for the other trigger because it's not looking for anything specific. It's just gonna be running periodically no matter what. And once again, we can do a console log just to make sure it's working. And so now if we go to triggers, we can see that this one is set up as well to run every five minutes. So I'll be back in about 10 minutes and I'll show you the trigger logs to sort of prove that it's running every five minutes. So we're back after some time. Um, we let the scheduled trigger run three times. Um, and as you can see here, it ran at 30, 35 and 40. So like we specified, it's going to be running five minutes apart. Um, and it did that all three times. And then I just set it up to log that the schedule trigger has run and it did that all three times. So as you can see, you can set it up to any timestamps that you want and it's just gonna keep doing it 
no matter what happened to the database, it's going to keep on a scheduled time running for you. So that was the basics of setting up triggers with MongoDB. I showed you guys how to do a database trigger and a schedule trigger, um, and then work with the function that Atlas gives you. In another video, I'll be going more in depth on how to use um, AWS services and the event bridge that is built in over here. Uh, but I didn't do it in this one because there's a lot of extra tools that are involved. But uh, hopefully you guys found this one useful and thanks for watching.